Hi everyone, Mia here, and today we're going to take a look at two solid professional P2 HD camcorders from Panasonic. Both the AG HPX255 and the AG HPX370 are geared towards video professionals who shoot in HD and want the option of the high quality recording format ABC Intro 100. It's rare to find cameras at these price levels that offer this luxury. With the format's 422 color sampling and 10 bit recording at 100 megabits per second, video quality quality far surpasses what's possible from many competing formats. Recording at this compression rate is especially helpful if you're shooting for graphic intensive post-production, like work on a green screen or color grading by a colorist. Many production companies and high-end clients will require this top quality format, especially since the added data helps to maintain quality during compression. ABC Intra offers significantly better compression efficiency compared with older MPEG-2 codecs. However, for most general shooting, you have the option of dropping down to AVCI 50, the full range of DVC Pro formats, or DV. Uh, both the 255 and the 370 have three 1 3rd inch 2.2 megapixel 3MOS sensors. While many professional camcorders feature larger sensors, I found that both of these camcorders are capable of shooting really beautiful video. Both of these video cameras record a maximum of 1080p video at 30 frames a second and 1080i or 720p at 60 frames per second, which is great for shooting action video. But they also have a variety of other frame rates you can choose from, which will allow you to create slow and fast motion effects natively in camera. For example, if you're shooting 12 frames per second for playback at 24p, that's called undercranking, and it'll give you the quick motion effect you often see of clouds drifting across the sky or a busy intersection. If you record at a frame rate of 60 frames per second and playback at 24p, then you'll create an overcranking or slow motion effect, often used for dramatic scenes like fight scenes or explosions in action movies. Let's take a look at the 5.5 pound HPX 255. Now, this camera is set up really nicely. It's ergonomically easy to shoot with and all the buttons are right where you want them to be. It's nicely balanced and lightweight. A one unique feature of the fixed 22x optical zoom lens is that you'll find three manual control rings, focus, zoom, and iris. Typically on a camera this size, you'll have the option of one or two manual rings, but three gives you the creative control that many filmmakers desire, and it allows you to manipulate the camera's settings quickly without menus, which is critical in a run and gun or breaking news type situation. And can we talk about that 22x zoom? In the 35 millimeter world, that's a 28 to 616 millimeter equivalent, clearly a leader among handheld cameras. But just remember that with the HPX 255, as you zoom in, the iris is going to get smaller on this camera, meaning your video actually might get darker if you have the lens wide open since the f-stop varies from 1.6 to 3.2 over the zoom range. Now you might not notice this unless you're in situations that require you to keep your iris all the way open, like when you're dealing with low light or trying to maintain a shallow depth of field. The HPX255 offers manual and servo zoom. There are two servo zooms on board here, one on the handle and one right on top of the camera here. You'll find all your basic audio controls for 16-bit four-channel audio, and there are two XLR inputs for external mics. A GenLock input, as well as timecode in and out, plus HD SDI output, ensures that this camera will work in environments such as live broadcast, studio productions, and with professional video equipment that require these connections. The feature that may make this video camera especially attractive to studio production is its ability to be controlled remotely through a camera control unit or CCU. This is also the feature that sets this camera apart from its sister model, Panasonic's popular HPX250 camcorder. If you're working in a studio with a Panasonic AG EC 4G extension control unit or thinking about purchasing one, this camera will fit right in. Together, these provide remote control over the 255's gain, white balance, shutter speed, etc. So versatility is a key component here as you can use this camera in the field or in the studio. The 255 shoots on P2 cards and holds two at a time, but it's capable of hot swapping. Now the P2 cards cost more if you're coming from a SD card, CF card, or HDV tape camera, and it's a proprietary format. However, P2 is great for reliability and durability. You won't lose or break a card like you might with an SD card. 
You will also find a convenient SD card slot on this camera where you can capture your camera's scene and user files and transfer them to another Panasonic camera to avoid the whole setup process. So if you've recorded and stored several scene files and you have all the user buttons programmed to your favorite functions, you can easily transfer those settings to a different camera. To me, the 255 seems like a great camera for small journalism organizations and studios. It's fast and easy to use, making it great for events and run and gun style shooting. And at only five and a half pounds, it's easy to travel with and carry all day. Plus, its ability to record in such a high quality format, in the form of that AVC Intro 100, makes it a good option for commercial and green screen work. And if you're already working with older equipment that supports the P2 card format, then it's a real upgrade in recording quality and control. The LCD screen on the 255 is nice and big, a little bigger than the one you'll find on the 370, despite the difference in camera size, and I found the viewfinder to be sharp as well. Let's move on over to the big boy now, the 370. Now when I say big, it's not really big at only 11 pounds. You could use this on location with very little strain for an hour or so. But if you're shooting all day, it's going to get heavy. This is an over-the-shoulder style camera with the basic ergonomics and controls of a typical ENG style camera. It's meant to sit comfortably on your shoulder, giving you the stability you need to capture steady video, but the flexibility to be able to move around freely without a tripod. Just the ENG style alone usually means a big price tag, but this camera is still very affordable. But be warned, this is a professional camera. It takes time to set up and dig through all the buttons and controls and configurations. It's not as easy to learn as the 255 if you've never worked with a professional video camera before. But once you familiarize yourself with it, I think you will be really happy with how easy the 370 is to use. Now, I know there have been some concerns about the viewfinder on this camera, but I have to say that I didn't experience any problems with it. The colors were clear and the image was sharp. Another feature that sets the 370 apart from the 255 is the interchangeable HD Fujinon lens. Now, even though the Fujinon zoom lens fronts only one third inch sensors, I thought the video quality was quite nice. Here again, you have the manual zoom, focus, and iris control rings with a maximum iris of 1.6 to 4.2, depending on the focal length. Your image will hold good light and color a lot longer over the 17x zoom range, so you'll get better low light and shallow depth of field performance than the 255. I was able to capture video with a really nice shallow depth of field by using the macro focus. There's a small macro button and adjustment ring on this lens that makes shooting up close and details a cinch. Sometimes with a lens like this and a camera this size, it can be really limiting when it comes to shooting up close. The macro adjustment gives you the option to quickly focus on small details on the fly without digging through a bunch of menus. The 370 offers a shutter speed from 1 6th of a second to 1 2,000th of a second. And both cameras have synchro scan, which is ideal for capturing screenshots from a computer. You'll also find two P2 card slots, like with the 255, which can record up to 64 minutes of video at the highest resolution if you're using the 64 gig cards and an SD card slot for file sharing. The three user buttons that I mentioned earlier can be programmed for instant access to a function that you use the most. These are just below the focus assist button that can help you make sure your focus is tack sharp. I use it a lot when my subjects are a good distance away. Focusing with the 370 was a breeze, and you have the option of displaying a focus bar on screen, which will show you when most of your image is in focus. If you're working on a deadline, a nice little RET button up here by the servo zoom will locate and play back the last two seconds of the clip you just shot, so you can quickly check yourself in the field. Plus, a pre-record option will record several seconds before you press record, so you won't miss something. It pre-records seven seconds if you're shooting 720 or lower, and three seconds at 1080. You'll find all the outputs you'd expect on a full broadcast quality camera, a composite BNC, two HD SD SDI BNC connections, two XLR inputs for audio, Genlock, timecode, and Firewire. This camera offers seven gamma curves, including Cinelite gamma, which will produce the warm tone of film. Like most broadcast quality video cameras, you'll find controls for all four channels of audio, plus dedicated controls for selective audio playback. Your video will be captured in clips, which you can browse by thumbnail in playback mode, and playback works the same way with the 255. I only wish that the 370 had an HDMI output like the 255 does. Then it would be easier to hook up to a consumer monitor in the field. 
Clearly, Panasonic has put a lot of work into designing professional video cameras that are ergonomically designed for ease of use and capable of recording in the high-quality AVC Intro 100 format. Both the HPX255 and the 370 are nicely equipped cameras for this price range. Thanks for watching. I'm Mia McCormick. We'll see you again soon. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.